So you're definitely reading the title of my slides correctly. Coffee mugs are donuts, but not in the way you think. I'm not trying to tell you that literally coffee mugs are donuts. Please do not go home and eat a coffee mug like it's a donut. You're going to be in a lot of pain. I'm just going to introduce you to a mathematical way to look at it from the point of view of a type of mathematician that I hadn't heard about until over the summer. And that point of view is called topology. Now, if you're reading this definition, you might be a little confused if you don't understand a lot of mathematical vocabulary, but if you want to shorten it easily, all, you, all it says is that topology is the study of geometrical properties and shapes such that you can shape them, you can contort them, you can distort them, you can make them bigger, make them smaller. You can basically do whatever you want to that shape as long as you don't add or take away any holes. So basically, you can do whatever you want to this shape, regardless of what color, what material, what it is. Unless you're doing it without creating or destroying holes. Now, let's make a donut, shall we? I was told we're not allowed to use stoves on this stage, so we're just going to have to go the mathematical route. Now, I want you to start with a square like this. It can be any square. It can be made of anything. It doesn't matter. All that matters with this square is that when you cross the top border, you teleport to the bottom. So if you keep walking upwards, you'll just keep going in a cycle for infinity. And the same thing happens from left to right, right to left, down and up. Now, what we can do with this square is we can turn this teleportation system into a three-dimensional model. All we have to do, technically, is just connect the two sides that teleport to each other. So let's say when you walk up to the top, you teleport to the bottom. The easiest way to visualize that is to connect the two. Because when you connect two ends of a line, you get a circle. And what do circles do? They cycle. So by connecting the bottom side of the circle and the top side of the circle, you get a shape that a lot of people know. It's a cylinder. And with this cylinder, what you can do now is you can connect the left and right. But that might be a little bit confusing, because how are you going to twist a cylinder and turn it so that the two sides meet? Well, this is where topology comes in. Because using topo topological ideals, you can stretch this cylinder. You can just imagine, just imagine it's made of clay, but the clay infinitely replaces itself as you move it. So when you stretch this clay, instead of making it getting smaller because the volume is a specific amount, it basically just keeps adding on to itself. So as you make the cylinder bigger, the radius stays the same. So now that you have a long cylinder, you can just roll it so that the two ends are connected and you get a donut. But topologists don't call the shape a donut. They call it a torus, because, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> and remember when I was talking about the definition of a torus? Not a torus, topology. I said specifically that you have to not create, not destroy any holes. So theoretically, I can say that any shape that has one hole in it is a torus. And I'm going to prove that to you with a coffee mug. Now, how many holes does a coffee mug have? Can anyone tell me? Two. One. I heard a lot of ones and I heard a lot of twos. And those of you that said one are right, so I'm going to address the second one. You might be thinking of where you pour the actual coffee, but that is not a hole. When you pour the coffee, does it come out the bottom of the coffee mug? No. So therefore, it's not a hole. So now, what you can do with this is you can think like a topologist. Now, go back to this self-adding clay. Go take the coffee mug, go inside where you pour the liquid, go to the bottom of that area, and just pull it out. If you pull it and you think of it as it self-adds its volume, you get a solid cylinder. Now, if you think of it as clay, it might be easier because all you have to do is just mold the shape into a normal-looking donut without having to destroy any of the holes that are already there. Because the hole that's in between the handle and the coffee mug is still there. Now that I've described to you exactly that a coffee mug and a donut are topologically the same, I want to leave you with a question. If a coffee mug and a donut are topologically equal, does that make the coffee that is inside the mug topologically equal to the donut hole? Thank you.